Greetings to all of you and God bless you today. I hope everybody's doing well. Many people in today's world, when they read their Bibles, believe that Jesus Christ can only be found in the New Testament and exclude the Old Testament altogether. They believe the story of Jesus begins at his birth in Bethlehem, but this couldn't be further from the truth. You may have heard the saying, the New Testament is the old concealed. The old is in the new revealed. That statement is absolutely true. As you read through the entire Bible, you will see that it is all connected. It all points to God's complete story of the fall and redemption of mankind through his son, Jesus Christ. Everything is in the Bible for a reason, from the book of Genesis all the way through the book of Revelation. In fact, in the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 15, this is also known as the Proto-Evangelium. This is actually the first mention of Christ's salvation, and this is the very first book of the Bible. In the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 15, we see here God speaking to the serpent, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Approximately one-third of the Bible is prophecy. I would say that's pretty significant, wouldn't you? One reason why God made such a large portion of his word prophecy is that it demonstrates to us that the Bible is 100% accurate. In fact, in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 29, the Lord Jesus Christ says the following, And now I have told you before it come to pass that when it has come to pass, ye might believe. Many prophecies have been fulfilled already, just like many more will be fulfilled in the near future. All one has to do is look at the prophecies surrounding the first coming of Christ to understand the precision of God's holy word. The events surrounding his birth, life, crucifixion, and resurrection are detailed precisely hundreds of years before Jesus was born in Bethlehem. So I get it, Chad. You're saying that approximately one-third of the Bible is prophecy, that God demonstrates his word is 100% accurate through the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Therefore, we can trust the unfulfilled prophecies, prophecies will be fulfilled in the near future. But how does it point us to Jesus Christ? Let me give you a few reasons why. First, Bible prophecy points us to Jesus because we can clearly see his word coming to life. If the prophecies are true, the Bible is true. If the Bible is true, then the gospel is true. Secondly, Bible prophecy points us to Jesus because it gives us hope. I don't know about you, but as I look around the world, seeing it getting darker and more evil by the day, if I did not have the hope of Jesus and the hope of our future glory, I would lose my mind. Thirdly, Bible prophecy points us to Jesus because it provides a great way to share our faith. As we witness these prophecies coming to pass and preparing to come to pass, just as God's word say they will, God's word says they will, we hold an incredible tool that we can use to evangelize to those who are doubting Thomases. Let's face it, we live in a world where people want to see to believe. And if they would just pick up their Bibles to see how perfect and accurate God's word is, it all points to Jesus Christ. How much more does God have to do to prove himself? His creation, the sun, moon, stars, nature, etc., bears witness of him, and so does the accuracy of his word. The final thought I will leave you with is this. Bible prophecy points us to Jesus in that it can cause an awakening in those who are asleep. There are thousands of testimonies from, pro from professed Christians that when they saw that Bible prophecy was unfolding before their eyes, it created a hunger and a thirst to dig, to dig deeper into the word and transform their lives even more to live for Christ. There are also thousands of testimonies of skeptics, atheists, and even those who formerly practiced various religions, Muslims, Buddhists, etc., that when they saw the accuracy of God's word, and the perfect prophetic precision it carries, it led them 
to a new life in Christ. The bottom line is this. From Genesis to Revelation, Bible prophecy points us to Jesus Christ. And whoever you are watching this right now, if you do not have Jesus Christ in your life, today is the day of salvation. You can be saved right now. The reality is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places, and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. It's eternal torment. It's eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven, and he's the only name that can save you. In John chapter 14, verse 6, we read, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. In Acts 4.12, we read, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. In the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, we read, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. So the Virgin Mary is not going to save you. Buddha is not going to save you. Allah is not going to save you. Muhammad is not going to save you. Dead saints are not going to save you. Religion is not going to save you. The New Age movement is not going to save you. Your own human effort, you trying to earn your way there, that is not going to save you. There is only one way to the kingdom of heaven and one name that can save you, and that is Jesus Christ and him alone. What do you have to do to be saved? The gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. Believe. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin that, that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross at Calvary so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. And he was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin that, that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with them forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. Jesus loves you so much, and he demonstrates his love for you for what he did for you on the cross. In Romans 5, 8, we read, But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It's my prayer right here and right now. Put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now because tomorrow is not promised. I love you all and God bless you.